XRP, XRP, XRP. The Bulls are getting ready to run out the gates, family. Can't you feel it? Hi, Vibe Assets. Welcome back to today's show. I got a good one for you today. You know every time that you click on this channel, the content is going to be bullish. Go ahead and give me a follow on my Twitter page at High Vibe Assets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off today's show. See, this is the interesting part. This is the part to where we've been waiting on. This is the part to where things are going to get sticky. Let me explain what I mean. I remember seeing the video of Brad Garlinghouse or about 2017, 2018, talking about, you know, just development and adoption of cryptocurrencies. And one thing that he alluded to, he says, look, what's going to happen and what's going to come is 99% of the digital asset space is going to go to zero. It's only going to be about 40 or 50 tradable digital assets that you're going to be able to trade here within the next couple of months because we're talking about legislation, because we're talking about regulation. And the most important thing about this moment in time is now we're going to find out what these digital assets, we're going to be see what they really are classified as. You know, we've been hearing different narratives, different points. I've brought up different points on this show of what these assets could be deemed as. A lot of them will be commodities, but now we're going to be talking about currency. You see, XRP has been the only digital asset that has been classified as a currency. We've heard commodities a lot dealing with Bitcoin, Ether, other assets. But when you're talking about currency, XRP is head above the heels with these other assets. Bank of International Settlements, World Economic Forum, International Monetary Fund, SWIFT, ISO 20022, G7, G30. I can continue to name them about XRP being a currency. I got this quick video right here that I want to start off today's show just to get everybody to understand that these assets that we're dealing with, family, a lot of them are going to be commodities. A lot of them are going to be labeled with that commodity token. First of all, 99% of them, they're going to go down a drain because most of these assets are no utility, no demand, lack of supply, no real world use case to even be adopted into this ecosystem. Things are about to get sticky. We're talking about a Cambridge explosion coming towards XRP here in a second. XRP is not a security. XRP is not a commodity. XRP will be deemed as currency. The spot market, it's not a security. It's not a leveraged retail commodity product. Then there is no CFTC or SEC regulatory authority over that product. There is only CFTC enforcement jurisdiction. How large is that universe? It is large. And I base that on two key assumptions. First, I looked at the top 15 digital assets by market capitalization. Now, there are thousands of digital assets, but the top 15 account for about 86% of the market. Second, I looked to what the commissions themselves have said about those 15 digital assets. Not a chairman, not a commissioner, but the commission itself, because only commission can speak for itself. Based on my review and looking at CFTC and SEC enforcement actions, it appears that the CFTC has asserted that seven of the top 15 digital assets are commodities. These seven digital assets are some of the largest, accounting for approximately 76% of the digital asset market. The SEC, as a commission, has never challenged any of those CFTC determinations, some of which have been around for years. Instead, the SEC, in an enforcement action, has asserted that only one of the top 15 digital assets is a security, and that digital asset currently accounts for about 2% of the market. 76 to 2. 76% a commodity, 2% a security, and the rest of the top 15, about 8% undetermined. I don't think that should be very surprising because the market division between swaps regulated by the, S the CFTC and securities-based swaps regulated by the SEC is about 90% swaps for the CFTC and 10% security-based swaps for the SEC. So I conclude where I began. 
there is a significant regulatory gap in federal spot market regulation of digital assets because the large majority of digital asset spot market activity falls outside the regulatory jurisdiction of the CFTC and the SEC. And that's the moment, and this is the point that I want to bring up when you're talking about these digital assets. This is the reason why I believe we're about to see a Cambridge explosion. There are assets inside of this ecosystems that are not securities and they're not commodities either. I'm going to say that again. You have assets, right? That are going to be digital assets, cryptocurrencies that are not commodities and that are not securities that falls outside of the jurisdiction of the CFTC that falls outside of the jurisdiction of the SEC. I've been bringing this up. What I try to do is I try to bring, you know, multiple layers and multiple narratives to try to paint a broad brush for my listeners, for everybody that subscribes, so you can prepare yourself for your own digital perspectives as best as you can. But how I feel on the High Vibe channel, I've always said it from the beginning, that XRP is a currency. Why do I say that? XRP is in the position to be the bridge currency of the world, to be the supranational currency, essentially the agnostic exchange token that's going to make the internet of value come alive. We cannot have interledger protocol, RippleNet. We cannot have the XRP ledger without a currency bridging these other currencies. How can a commodity bridge a currency? Okay. How can a security bridge a currency this is what we're going to be talking about today ladies and gentlemen and i thought that this was very interesting that the federal reserve chair jerome powell says that they see stable coins as a form of money no you don't say it absolutely it's a form of money because it is money again when you're talking about the biggest conglomerates in the world imf Bank of International Settlements, World Economic Forum, World Bank, ISO 2022, and SWIFT. These are the hierarchy of the monetary system that we use, okay? They set the rules and regulations and the visions. They allow what they want to allow and don't allow what they don't want to allow. All of the big institutions that trickle down to the commercial banks and the commercial institutions as we know of them, because we're the one that interact with them, they are labeling XRP and XLM as stable coins. Check out this chart and what I'm showing you on the screen, family. I've shown this chart multiple times how XRP is being designated as an agnostic exchange token for institutional value in bulk settlements and payments. Same as well as cross-border payments, DeFi payments, peer-to-peer, business-to-business remittances, XRP being deemed as a stable coin by the World Economic Forum, by the International Monetary Fund, by the Bank of International Settlements, and here in the United States, we're getting that clarity that stable coins are a form of money. <laughs> See, just a couple of days ago, Deutsche Bank applies for a crypto custody license. Deutsche Bank banks hold money. Yeah, they hold different assets as well on their balance sheets as well, but they're not going to be holding commodities. Banks are not holding soybeans. Banks are not holding gold. Well, some of them, when, you, when you're talking about like smaller banks and different things of that nature, what do they deal with? They deal with money. OK, the availability to send money, to receive money, to deal with money, to make deals, to make trade. A bank is centered around money. Why do you think that the big conglomerates are coming into the crypto space as we're talking about it right now? As we've seen Gary Gensler, Goldman Gary, Jay Clayton put up on these fraudulent lawsuits against Coinbase, against Kraken, against BlockFi, against Binance. To bring down the value of these digital asset companies because they know what's coming. The International Monetary Fund has already deemed XRP as a stable coin. Jer Jerome Powell coming live today saying that they see stable coins as a form of money. 
We understand that stable coins are at the front of the legislation inside of the United States family. Things are heating up. I keep telling everybody that 2023 is the year of the digital asset. The big and company players are coming into the game now. This is no joke. NASDAQ is in the game. BlackRock, Vanguard is in the game. Fidelity, okay? And multiple, multiple other um, big companies, Citadel, I can continue going on and on, have given the green light to cryptocurrencies in the United States. But we're talking about those cryptocurrencies that are not securities. We're talking about those cryptocurrencies like the video that I played to start off today's show that are not commodities. What are they going to be? How many of them are going to get this designation in the first place? Which one has the utility? Which one has the liquidity? Which one has the transparency? Which blockchain is the most battle tested to be used by these big conglomerates? Look at what I'm showing you on your screen, family. This is the IMF. This is the Central Bank of Central Banks. This is the Bank of International Settlements. This is the World Bank. This is ISO. This is SWIFT. This is World Economic Forum. It doesn't get any higher on this level when you're talking about finance. It just does not. The incumbent players did everything that they can to try to bring down the value of these digital assets so they can come into this space and grab a big chunk of it up. And that's exactly what they're doing. John Deaton had told us this over two years ago that the incumbent players, when they decide to come into this space, they're going to bring the market down and they're going to pour in institutional trillions. And what I think what's happening is that cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin is one of the few times in history where the individual kind of front run the, the industry, if you right. will, in the hedge funds. And personally, I think the Gensler's attack on crypto is to allow the hedge funds and the Wall Streeters to come in, crash the market, they come in and then By the way, they did that with the stock market. And this is what we're talking about right here, about the big institutional players coming into this digital asset space. All of them have announced, essentially, they're making their moves to come into this space, to come in and bring in their institutional trillions of networks and their assets management that they can deploy in this space. BlackRock has given crypto the green light. Vanguard, Fidelity, UBS, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan and Chase, they've all given the green light to cryptocurrency. Goldman Sachs, BNY Mellon, we understand that Ripple has been linked with essentially all of these conglomerates plugging them in to the internet of value plugging them in onto ripple net eventually showing them the interledger protocol again the united states the federal reserve sees stable coins as a form of money this is exactly what xrp is because if you're going to have a bridge asset to bridge these currencies to be the agnostic exchange for international payments for domestic payments for all different type of use cases that asset cannot be a commodity it has to be a currency going from one currency going to the bridge currency settling in another currency in seconds and you know what this means right when xrp does get that currency designation It's not going to be a reason to sell because it is money. Why would you take an asset and sell an asset for another depreciary asset that's going down where we're talking about the United States dollars and other fiat currencies that are losing strength at the moment? We understand that the United States dollar is losing its strength. When you take over your USD and you put it over into XRP, you are exchanging one currency to another. You see, people, man, we get these mindsets. We want to cash out. You know, we want to we want to we want to take the most valuable asset that has ever been created, essentially, especially in a digital version with the Internet of value. And we want to think about exchanging it for a deflationary fiat currency. XRP is a bridge currency. All utility digital assets will coexist. This is what's going to happen. Given the birth to the Internet of Value, XRP is going to operate like a currency. You know, there's been a lot of discussion around stable coins being used to solve some of the same issues that you've just outlined. Uh, what's your what's your take on the stable coins versus CBDC debate? Can stable coins do the same thing? 
I think from a from a technical functionality point of view, there's not a big difference between stablecoin and CBDC. The, the real issue is is who's who's issuing it and who's backing it. So we do see a world of coexistence. I think CBDC will become ultimately um, the preferred um, uh, digital currency for a lot of people because they feel safe and secure because it's backed by the central bank. Um, but but we see them coexisting, and the same way that we see uh, cryptos coexisting. You know, our Ripple net network, as you may know, um, uses uh, XRP as a bridge currency between currencies as a way to negate the need to pre-fund accounts. We call it on-demand liquidity. So we think all of these different uh, digital currencies have a role to play and will all coexist. This is where we're talking about these assets that are not securities and that are not commodities. You see a lot of us, we're tied up in the SEC, we're tied up in the CFTC, XRP is not a security. Well, XRP is not a commodity either, as we just hearing it live, that XRP is going to be on these blockchains operating as a currency. Let's get it from another mouth. Let's get it from an old head of SWIFT. SWIFT is the biggest money mover in the world when we're talking about cross-border payments, remittances and settlements, financial messaging systems, $29 trillion a day. We understand that. XRP is going to be moving on these blockchains as currency. This is coming from Swift. Just imagine the price of XRP, what it's going to go at when you got $29 trillion going day to day on its ledger. Replacing Swift. So we did speak yeah. earlier where you mentioned that it's not necessarily about replacing Swift. It's about complementing yeah. it. So let's yeah. get some more information on this. Okay. I used to work for Swift. I was Swift for 20 years, so Swift is flowing through my veins. Swift is the pre preeminent messaging system for the financial industry, which covers, say, payments, FX, trade in, in terms of uh, securities, etc., not to reconciliations, etc. What we're looking with the crypto, though, is uh, where Swift would have a store and forward system for most of its payment transactions, and where you need service level agreements that in a certain time I will do something, the payment turns up at a certain time during the day. Here we're looking at the new network styles, which allow instant, real time movement of the funds and visibility of those funds as well. So we would not have a situation where banks need to come back to you and say, have my funds arrived uh, it's three days later, uh, I need to find out or find query messages moving around the network. It's nothing like that. I don't believe Ripple is going to replace Swift. Ripple is one of the complementary networks, which is going to allow those institutions who need real time to make use of that. And I think um, we're also seeing that SWIFT are changing their, their network capability so that real time will be a possibility as, that, uh, as well. But we may also see Ripple XRP moving across the SWIFT network as a currency when we're perhaps using something like FX. See, this is what they're saying, family. This is not speculation or something that I'm just making up and shooting it from the hip. The biggest conglomerates, financial conglomerates that control our lives, that controls the way of what we know about money, of what they think about money. They're saying that XRP is moving as a currency. When you think about that, ladies and gentlemen, and you understand that so much of this security hype that we have been into within the last couple of years, so much of this commodity hype and what is is XRP and what is not XRP when you think about that the Federal Reserve is recognizing that stable coins is a form of money the biggest conglomerates International Monetary Fund Bank of International Settlements World Economic Forum the World Bank ISO and SWIFT is all recognizing XRP as being a stable coin we see that SWIFT is recognizing that XRP will move on the ledgers as a currency the price of XRP is going to be like a damn tsunami. Oh my goodness. 
Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure that you smash that subscribe button as well. And we're going to end off today's show, family. We're going to be talking about CBDCs and Ripple as being the Amazon of crypto. Ripple CBDC platforms directly using the XRP ledger. I'm going to read this to you real quick. More than 90% of countries exploring, developing, and implementing central bank digital currencies as a way to increase financial inclusion and lower the cost of risk of domestic and cross-border payments Today, Ripple is announcing the CBDC platform, a frictionless end-to-end solution for central banks, governments, and financial institutions to issue their own central bank digital currency, leveraging the power of the same blockchain technology used in the XRP ledger to enhance this platform would not only allow its users to holistically manage and customize the entire life cycle of a fiat based central bank digital currency transactions and its distribution 2023 is the year of the digital asset thanks for everyone tuning in to today's show make sure you hit that like button make sure you hit that subscribe button go ahead and turn on those notifications this is not financial advice and i'm not a financial advisor but please let everyone know that the high vibe said that the bulls are getting ready to run out the damn gates